officials. When I've been doing some hardware hacking, I found that I really needed something to hold down projects and be able to back probe them. Well, I found this amazing 3D printed system that uses acupuncture needles for probe points and I decided I'd make it, video it for you guys and share the project. Mm -hmm. Project files for this are found on Thingiverse and it's incredibly complete with awesome pictures and you can even order the parts directly from them as well if you don't have a 3D printer, which is really, really cool. I downloaded all the parts and went ahead and started pulling them into Cura. I'm using a pretty ancient version of Cura here because I have published all my settings for my different styles of printing, uh, 3D printed aircraft, you name it. They're all on my GitHub, so I kind of stick with what works and, and the settings that I'm sharing with all of you out there. So I'll link the GitHub repository down below. Once I pulled everything in, sort of situated everything on the build plate for my i3, I went ahead and sliced it and we move ahead to printing. As usual, we're going to use the i3 Mega instead of the CR10. I just favor the print quality from this printer. It just, just works magnificent. So we're going to go ahead and we'll use uh, some Amaze 3D uh, PLA filament that I've had kicking around forever. But because of the way I store it in these totes with this desiccant, they, it just lasts. It hasn't gotten waterlogged or anything. Every time I print, it just seems to work amazing. Not much to it from here on out. We go ahead and load up the filament and let the printer do its magic. The prints came out great as expected, just a little tiny bit of stringing on a couple of spots that we'll have to clean up with a razor blade, but overall super happy with it. If you're a maker or electronics enthusiast, make sure you check out PCB Way. They can make any circuit board you desire, provide the parts, and even assemble the board for you. They now offer fully transparent tracking on your order so you can see where your project is at from start to finish. I store all my projects in these totes and it just seems to work out well. So before the pandemic hit, I had already grabbed the hardware for this and sort of set all the prints aside so it would be ready for me to assemble. Well, handy enough, COVID-19 gave me enough time to do all this. This style of buying hardware is not advised. These individual packets came from my local TSC store. This, that's the only place that had anything, and it was crazy expensive. It was about $25 Canadian for this hardware, but overall, $25 bucks for a functional tool? I'm okay with that. Support material had to be used on some of these arms, these levers, so it comes off super easy just with your fingernail, but better to use a screwdriver or a scraper, that way you don't end up with this stuff underneath your fingernail and cut you open.
The design is actually set up so that the hex heads from the hardware fit into the slots in the in the actual model. So the backside kind of guides your bolts in place and holds them in a vertical fashion. Pretty cool. So all you have to do is make sure that the slots are entirely cleared out so that everything can slide sort of easy. Uh, it's not like you're moving this all the time, but you do want to be able to slide it when you want to adjust it without frustration. Pretty cool. I really like this design. It works wonderful. So from here, you just repeat this on all the hold downs and all the arms as per the design on Thingiverse. There's not much to it. Just uh, clear out any holes or any extraneous plastic as you need. And yeah, it goes together no problem. I'll skip ahead. This is where we come to the business end of the build. These are the arms that we're going to use for the actual probes. They use acupuncture needles to actually make contact with your circuit board, which is what drew me to this project in the first place. It's, it's quite ingenious. So we've got to go ahead and make our arms so that they're nice and free and everything works and then go ahead and install our acupuncture needles. I got these ones from eBay. I've added some to my make me store down below and I'll try and remember to link the eBay listing where I got these if it's still up. They just come in a foil wrapper. You've got to be crazy careful with these. They are, they are needles. They are sharp, sharp, sharp. They will poke you uh, deep and bleed you will. Once you got everything set up and sort of install these as you wish, as many as you need, you can fasten wires onto the ends of them with ferro crimps or solder wires. But in my case, uh, for my testing, I just decided to use alligator clips and the scope leads direct. I think depending on whatever project I'm doing, that'll probably change. clever board clamps in the middle will hold just about anything whether it be corner wise or sort of down from the top in a clamping motion really really neat design so it'll fit just about everything from uh, pieces right out of consumer electronics to the spread board hold it in place quite well so testing this out was as simple as chucking up the board, a Wemos D1 in this case, and going ahead and locating the probes. It's best to set the probe down on the PCB and put a little bit of preload on it so that the probe is just slightly bowed and that way it holds tension onto the board. This can be quite a fiddly process, I found out. I didn't anticipate it to be quite this difficult. Now, this isn't something that you're going to do every day. This is not a tool I intend on using every day, so that's not a problem. But another unanticipated issue is that these probes don't actually work very well. I had a very hard time getting a connection to my scope, as you can see here, just flatlined. I think it's because of the actual contact area of the end of the needle is simply too tiny in some cases. So you end up on top of some pre-existing solder flux or you may not be on the joint as well as you think, might be touching the solder mask even. You almost need to look under a microscope to make sure that you're sort of in the right zone or a good magnifying glass helps or maybe some younger eyes than mine. I was able to get it working. Uh, I found that actually if I snipped the ends of the needles off or dulled them slightly, then it did seem to work slightly better. I may experiment with some other style of probes just to see what works best depending on the situation, whatever I'm working with. Overall, it was definitely a successful project and this is going to be a valuable piece of equipment in my lab that definitely has a place on my bench when needed. If you like these style projects, please consider clicking a thumbs up or let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see. I uh, love hearing from you guys. And these are fun, fun little projects at very, very little money. Don't buy the hardware like I did at TSC and you'll be all set. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters and channel members who make these projects possible. Good luck in all your electronics ventures.